I took a MOOC, I wasn't hooked, but I'll take another look. All sorts of studies and opinion pieces are circulating right now about MOOCs, the Massive Open Online Courses. The acronym doesn't say it, but the formula is mainly a college-university level one at this time, though we could easily imagine some of these concepts crossing over to general adult education. It is, after all is said and done, a form of distance education. Depending on your source, you'll get different appraisals of this delivery method as either a hard-hitting higher education innovation or a foreseeable fizzling failure. Want my opinion? Yeah, I'll take that as a yes. I think both views have some truth to them, but neither is actually right. Just in case you're not familiar with the concept of the MOOC, here's what it is in a nutshell. It is a course offered online to thousands of students in the same time period. The lectures are usually pre-recorded, though some may be live. While several purveyors now offer an optional paid enrollment that will grant you a certificate for your participation, the original formula is free. The advocates of the MOOC praise its flexibility and reach. Yes, there are certain key dates by which quizzes or other types of work have to be finished by, but the video lectures allow the learners to view the content 24-7. For a person working full-time, that's an important advantage. It is the cherry on top of not having to attend class on campus. Plus, you can't get much more affordable than free, so now anyone on the planet with an internet connection can gain access to some of the top universities' content. All of this sounds pretty amazing, right? So what are the critics saying? I mean, anything new always gets its lot of naysayers, but you wouldn't expect a pioneer of the concept to speak out against his own creation. Sebastian Thrun, co-founder of Udacity, did just that, calling the MOOC a lousy product. There's more context to that, of course. May I suggest reading the Fast Company interview? Other critics say that MOOCs are likely to encourage governments to cut funding to universities. Statistics are pointing out that MOOCs are, by and large, reaching the already educated, not so much the people in developing countries that can't afford traditional tuition. The main problem Thrun sees in the model is that only a very small portion of students registering for a MOOC ever complete it, as low as 7%. This dismal completion rate raises an interesting question. Could the cost of attending university be a motivator for completing a course? Is tuition a factor of perseverance? Then we could ask, do costly universities get better success rates because they are more expensive? Down the line, I don't really care. So what if most don't get to the end of their MOOCs? Did the people learn something on the way? Were they testing the waters before applying for in-person enrollment? Maybe. Perhaps some see the MOOC as a longer TED Talk, or as an organized series of curiosity-satisfying videos, like the ones Vsauce, Veritasium, CGP Grey, and other amazing YouTube channels offer. Low completion rates are only a problem if we're looking for MOOCs to replace universities. But if universities, colleges, and schools offered all of their video lessons online, if only for philanthropic reasons, every potential learner wins. By the same token, the learning institution can now show off how great their teachers or professors are while everybody benefits from some of the best learning references the world has to offer. This addresses the problem I had with the MOOC I tried. It was a didactic disaster, I'm sorry to say. You'll understand if I don't mention the course and university. A standard series of lectures, poorly designed slides, and low-level memory and listening quizzes that reminded me of everything we tell teachers to steer away from. On a technical note, the online quizzes weren't well adapted for my tablet, which was very annoying. We were forced to participate in a forum, and several students were completely off-topic, but hey, they entered some words and thus met the criteria. You can imagine I was not part of the 7% in that course. I didn't leave it at that. I took another look. I took part of one of Sebastian Thron's courses. It was far superior to my first MOOC experience. It is important to note here that Mr. Thrun was inspired by Salman Khan, so the right-as-you-go friendly lecture is what you get. It is pleasant, but respectfully, it's still a brand new tool for the same old school. Using a computer to show you how to do things by hand feels like a throwback to me. The point I'm trying to make here is that a MOOC can only be as good as the content you're teaching. Not questioning what we teach 
often leads to teaching exactly what and how we always taught. Maybe that's why people are dropping out of MOOCs. Oh, you mean university hasn't changed in 30 years? It's just online? Well, might as well read a book, I guess. From that perspective, the massive open online courses are not much of an innovation. So should we dismiss MOOCs as a failed experiment? Certainly not. I believe that each new MOOC is an opportunity for teachers and professors to take stock of their pedagogical and didactic skills, rethink the traditional approach, and focus on leveraging technology for its learning potential, instead of merely using it as a mass delivery method slash correction tool. Every teacher can learn from every MOOC. To err is human, but to try again is learning. Or look at it this way. Wine gets better with age, we get better with experience. So if you don't try anything new, you could end up being yesterday's wine in a vintage bottle someday. I strongly suggest you try a MOOC or a few. Don't worry about being in the 7% who finish it. Concentrate on being one of those who explored it and learned from it.